Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to take a look at a motherboard from ASUS. This is the ASUS ROG Strix B650-A Gaming Wi-Fi. This motherboard at the moment retails on ASUS's own website £469.99 at the time of recording, which is November 2025. But this is one of those boards where you can potentially pick up an absolute bargain on the used market. Now, I actually picked this one up as a used deal, and Basically, it looks like brand new, so I did really well. I think I paid around about £120 for this, which I think is absolutely phenomenal value for money. And it comes with all the usual features that you'd expect from a B650 chipset motherboard, including PCI Express Gen 5 support for your M.2 drives. Also, you've got some nice features, such as the quick release for the graphics card, support for 128 gigabytes of RAM, built-in QLEDs, fantastic setup for the heat sinks and the coolers for your M.2s. Basically a pretty decent package of something which is in the kind of the mid refresh cycle for the B650 range. Now I just had to check something to check on the pricing because I thought 120 actually, did I pay that? So I did check my Amazon and also this was actually cheaper. So 108 pounds, which is absolutely phenomenal value for money. It's really hard to pick up a bargain such as this. Although, if you do want to pick up bargains, do head over to our Discord. There are two sections for eBay bargains and also for Amazon bargains, and basically any bargains at all. So if you want to pick up some of the latest deals here in the UK, then potentially do check out our Discord and potentially the savings you could get. So on today's video, we're going to go through just do an unboxing of this, see what it's all about, uh, go through the features, the specs, the ports, etc., any bifurcation or any potential snags on the PCI Express where you get the point where you plug in a drive and something else stops working. There is a little bit of that, but we will go through that in detail. So don't forget to check out the timestamps if you want to find out that sort of thing. But let's start off with the packaging. So packaging wise, pretty much usual stuff for an ROG board. Looks really nice. And this one actually does support Ryzen 9000 series straight out of the box. So that is good. So it's got a reasonably new BIOS on it. Of course, with these boards, modern boards these days, this also supports USB BIOS flashback and has a BIOS flashback button on the back. So if you do want to do a BIOS update before you put in your latest and greatest processor, if you're worried that it's an older board and it may not have an up-to-date BIOS, you can do that very easily. We've done a separate video on that, which I'll try and link below as well. On the back of the box, actually very difficult to read because they've done kind of gray text on a white background, doesn't stand out very much, uh, but you can get a general idea of what's going on there and also what is included in the box and some of the key features. Now, talking about what's included in the box, this is going back to the old school days where you actually did get multiple things inside of the package when you unbox it. So let's quickly take a look at what we get. So there are a pair of SATA cables, which is somewhat unusual these days. Most boards come with one or possibly even none. So that is decent if you're looking at using some older SATA based drives. It comes with some cable ties to help with cable management, which is a slightly unusual thing to see with a motherboard. For replacing M.2 drives, although each one of the heat sinks is already covered, there's also a spare in there as well. So if you want to replace your thermal pad on your M.2 drive, again, that is a very nice thing to see because they do tend to go a bit oily after time. So you get a spare one included in the pack. And also for mounting M.2 drives of different sizes, there's little pads there to help out with that. And also there is a spare quick release for the M.2s as well. This board supports Wi-Fi 6E and also Bluetooth 5.4. So obviously it does come with an included antenna, which has a magnetic base and the typical screw on connectors. Also, for those of you who like to uh, adorn yourself with ROG implements, there is an ROG key fob there. So if you want to use that, you can do. Nice to see it included, a little bit of a value added extra. And unlike a lot of motherboards these days, there is all sorts of regulatory notices and how-to guides, quick installs, etc. Something which is actually really nice is the fact there is a full user manual included, which again is getting rarer. We can't often see a QR code, but it's nice to see a manual included in the box. There's also a bunch of ROG stickers, which you can stick on your motherboard and or your case if you wish to. There's a thank you from ASUS. And also there is a warranty registration card. Remember those? So that's pretty much it for the unboxing. Let's take a look at this motherboard and see what it offers us. So in terms of VRM, you've got a 12 plus two plus one setup with 60 amp chokes. So you should be pretty good for most processors here. Obviously, if you are looking at putting in a 9950 or 9950X3D when they come out and you wanna be doing day long rendering tasks, then possibly the VRM might get a little bit toasty. Although there is a massive heatsink over this and it's actually quite a weighty board as well. So temp shouldn't be too bad, but obviously if you are looking at doing those sorts of tasks, 
and you're rendering or you're doing all CPU core loads for extended periods, then you might want to think about going maybe slightly higher up the range. But for pretty much everyone else and for gamers, this is going to be absolutely fine. Something which gives you kind of an idea towards where it's aimed, looking at the top connections there for your EPS or CPU power, you've got an eight pin and a four pin. So that does mean that potentially there is gonna be a little less juice going through, but realistically, most people generally just tend to use just one eight pin anyway, and it's absolutely fine. So again, this is somewhat lower down the ROG Strix tier. Obviously in the middle, we've got the AM5 socket. So something we've come to know and sort of love I guess these days although obviously do be careful with the pins especially if you're buying a used board make sure they're all nice and straight and look uniform they're an absolute pig to repair and potentially if they are damaged then essentially you write off the motherboard is extremely difficult to replace the socket so do bear that in mind if you're buying a used model. Moving across from there, so we've got a couple of PWM fan headers, one for CPU, one for AIO. Nice to see that included. And also at the top there, there is a CPU optional. So if you're using one of those coolers, like a, a stack one with two fans, you've got an individual header for each one. All of these are PWM and able to be controlled DC, etc. in things like Fan Expert or Armory Crate, that kind of thing if you want to. Underneath that one, you've got a 12 volt RGB header for the old Aurora Sync. And across from that, you've got your first of your three five volt, three pin ARGB headers. Next to that is something which is gonna be really beneficial to a lot of people, and that is the diagnostic D-LED. So that will light up if there's any potential issues with your system, such as CPU, DRAM, VGA, or boot. Sometimes if you've got it all set up right, but your graphics card isn't plugged in correctly to your monitor, sometimes you'll get the boot LED or the VGA LED. Uh, it's very good for diagnosing potential problems. And of course, if you get any problems diagnosing your PC, you're more than welcome to head over to our Discord to ask any further questions whilst you're going on with your build. Moving across that, so we've got our four RAM slots here. So this will support up to 128 gigs at the time of recording and speeds of up to 6,400 mega transfers per second for DDR5 modules. Underneath that, 24 pin main power connector. Underneath that, USB type C. So that's USB 3.2 Gen 1. So that's gonna be 10 gigabit per second. And underneath that, you've got your USB front panel connectors for your Type A's. So that's going to be five gigabit per second ports, two of those supported. Underneath that, or just to the side of it, you've got the Q release button. This is excellent and much better than the clips that we've had previously. So you press it in and it releases, remove it, and it locks your GPU into place. So that's absolutely excellent. Nice and easy to access. It saves you stabbing at your motherboard with a screwdriver trying to release the clips. Moving down from there, we've got four SATA ports if you wish to use SATA drives. And also there's the first of the PWM fan headers for your regular case fans. There's actually seven headers in total. So you've got quite a few there to choose from depending on your particular needs. And before we go on to the IO at the bottom, let's take a look at the PCI Express and M.2 slots and see what those are all about. So we'll start off with the best one. So the best one is here at the top. So this is gonna be PCI Express Gen 5 times four for M.2 drives backwards compatible with older drives as well. This is directly connected to the CPU, so no overhead on the system, directly connected, that's absolutely fine. Underneath that, PCI Express Gen 4x4. This one is actually also from the processor as well. And underneath that, we've got PCI Express Gen 4x4. This one is actually from the B650 chipset, which is underneath this big heatsink. All of the M.2s have got the quick release clips and also nice, decent heat sinks. So you shouldn't need to replace those out in any hurry, even if you are using faster drives. Next, we'll take a look at the PCI Express slot. So in the top one here, this is the one which is a little bit of a, not a letdown, but unfortunate. So this is PCI Express Gen 4 times 16. So if you are trying to buy a new PCI Express Gen 5 GPU, then potentially you might see a little bit of speed degradation depending on the card you get. Realistically, it's gonna be a couple of percent at best, but having said that, if you are looking at this motherboard and getting it as a bit of a used bargain or on the sales for around about £100, are you going to be using a PCI Express Gen 5 graphics card? I think the odds are slightly stacked against it, but I just wanted to make you aware of it. So if you are using PCI Express Gen 5, you are going to you lose a very small amount of speed. Moving down, so we've got PCI Express Gen 4 times one and another times one there, so two times one slots. 
And the bottom one is PCI Express Gen 4 times 16 sized, but wired for times four. Now this is where the bifurcation or the kind of one or the other comes into effect. So if you want to populate this bottom card with maybe a capture card, something like that, maybe a 10 gigabit network card, that sort of thing, then unfortunately it does disable this M.2 slot. If you've got an M.2 drive in here, PCI Express Gen 4 times four or lower, it will disable this slot. So it's a kind of one or the other. All the other slots are gonna be absolutely fine, but those are the two to be concerned with when you're looking at losing potential options for expandability. So that's pretty much it for the M.2 and PCI Express. Let's take a look at the front panel IO at the bottom. So pretty usual setup here. So at this corner, we've got all the front panel IO for connecting up reset button, power button, LEDs, etc. Next to that, PWM fan header, two USB 2.0 front panel connectors. Then you've got a slightly unusual one, which is a CPU overvolt switch. So you can take the jumper off there to allow the system to give your CPU more voltage. Most of us realistically are gonna be using stock or less voltage, but it is an option if you want to do some kind of crazy overclocking. Next that, there is the ASUS temp sensor input if you wanted to use that. And next that, there are two five volt three pin addressable ARGB headers. Next that, we've got the clear RTC, so for clearing your CMOS settings. Next to that, there is a Thunderbolt port, if you wanted to use the add-in Thunderbolt ports which are available. Next to that, there is an ASUS COM debug port, another PWM header, and then we've got a SPDIF connection for digital audio outputs or inputs. Then you've got your front panel audio connection, and you've also got your audio solution on there, which is an ALC4080. It's actually a pretty good setup, and also got nice chokes on there and also metal coating to try to remove any interference. Pretty good sound setup on here, supporting all the terrain formats that you could possibly think of, and also great sound to noise ratios. Also tucked in at the top here, next to the top M.2 slot, there is also a fan connector there, so PWM, so for things like fans that are gonna be at the back of the system, nice and easy access to that. And of course, we've got an integrated IO shield that goes over the heatsink. This one also has RGB effects as well. So with your Armory Crate software or your choice of RGB software, you can control the illumination on that section there and obviously the rest of the board as well. So let's move around to the rear panel and see what's going on here. So we've got a display port and also HDMI. So if you're using a CPU with integrated graphics, which a lot of the AM5 ones actually are, or if you're using an APU, the display port, display port 1.4, supporting up to 8K 60 hertz, and the HDMI supports up to 4K 60 hertz. Next up, there's a pair of super speed USB ports. So those are 10 gigabit per second. So that's USB 3.2 Gen 1. Then you've got your BIOS flashback button and LED. Next up, there's a bank of four USB 2.0 ports, and the top one is for your BIOS flashback. Then you've got your Intel 2.5 gigabit ethernet, which is a nice thing to see, nice Intel setup on there. Then you've got another two super speed ports. So that is a USB type A and also a USB type C, both 10 gigabit per second. Then you've got your Wi-Fi 6E connectors with the screw on types. Then there's another super speed USB Gen 2 by 2, so 20 gigabit per second, the fastest port on the back here, type C, and then you've got all of your audio input and output jacks. On the back of the board, not a lot to speak of, although it has got some interesting uh, silk printing on there, or silk screen printing on there. Uh, not that you're ever gonna see it, but yeah, there's a nice attention to detail anyway, as you normally find with these ASUS ROG Strix boards. And again, with this one, to kind of wrap things up, this always comes down to price. Now, around about £170, which is the normal retail price, there are other boards which you could probably consider. Maybe the MSI Tomahawk B650. That's a pretty decent board, although I do like the look of these ASUS boards. It does tend to fit into most setups. So these days we've got white cases, black cases, all sorts of colors going on. So this with its uh, kind of multitude of colors going on here, so black PCB, black RAM slots, chrome or silver accents on the heat sinks and also the white as well. It should fit in pretty well with most builds, I feel personally. So you don't feel locked into either having to do a black build or a white build or whatever. You can do a little bit of mix and match should you wish to. But overall, yeah, like I said, it's gonna come down to price. Uh, just over hundred pounds, I feel I got an absolute bargain. This is gonna make a cracking PC, especially a more budget orientated one, especially now that some of the B850 boards are ridiculously expensive considering 
the minimal upgrade in performance you get from them and most of them start from kind of like 180 upwards so yeah this i feel is still a decent bargain to be had and again coming up to november 2025 no doubt there's going to be some deals on with black friday well you'd hope so probably won't be looking quite so good for ram and ssds but hopefully motherboards cases and all that kind of stuff are going to see some little price decreases making it even more attractive to buy i probably wouldn't buy one at the full retail price 170 pounds i think i would have to be thinking very carefully and also thinking about that pci express gen 4 slot i would love to see that being a gen 5 and perhaps you might get that for 180 pounds elsewhere but for this particular setup I quite like it. I feel I got a bargain. Hopefully, if you've got one of these as well, you're really happy with it. And if you have got one of these boards already and you've been rocking it for a while, let us know how you get on with it in the comments section below. I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. If you've got any comments or questions you want know to do, stick them in that comments section below or reach out to us on the Discord. But I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully, we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.